Hello everyone, in this video I want to give you a conceptual introduction to latent growth mixture models. My name is Christian Geiser, on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials usually related to multivariate statistical methods such as structural equation or latent class models and often related to the m software. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like this video in case you like it and to check out the description for additional resources and services. So in this video I want to talk about latent growth mixture models and when you would use them or when they would be uh, potentially interesting to use. So first of all latent growth models are longitudinal models so they are applied when you have longitudinal data typically it requires you to have at least three measurement occasions or data from at least three measurement occasions better four or more and to have measurements for continuous variables so outcome variables that are measured on a continuous scale such as for example intelligence or personality measures that are quantitative and so with regular latent growth modeling we look at the trajectories of individuals across time for example we try to find out whether trajectories are linear or non-linear and we look at how people differ in terms of their trajectories for example how much variability is there in the in the initial scores or intercept scores as we say and how much variability is there in change across time and then potentially we're interested in what explains inter-individual differences in change over time so for example why do some individuals change more than others over time are there any predictors for that why some people um, for example become more depressed than others across time or become happier across time or make more money across time than others so we're looking at determinants of that and so latent growth mixture models are an extension of growth mixture models where we assume that there is unobserved heterogeneity in the trajectories now already in regular growth models we have heterogeneity so say that is accounted for because we estimate the variance of our intercept factor and we estimate the variance of the slope factor typically so we allow for inter-individual differences in uh, the initial scores and also in change across time so you could ask why do we need um, additional heterogeneity that is represented by a mixture distribution or by so-called latent classes where the trajectories differ across latent classes and so the reason for that is that latent class analysis or growth mixture analysis where we extract different latent classes that differ in specific growth parameters the reason for that is that it allows us to conveniently group individuals together who have similar trajectories so if we have for example a class of individuals who is high on depression and stays high so then it would be interesting to identify all those individuals because they might need a specific treatment or intervention because their levels of depression stay high across time so we want to separate those from individuals who uh, have low depression for example or where depression declines naturally across time and so latent growth mixture models allow us to identify subgroups with specific homogeneous uh, growth trajectories such that within a given mixture within a given or within a given class we have homogeneity of the trajectories and so we can then look at qualitative differences in the trajectories in terms of grouping individuals with simi similar growth patterns across time and so the way this works is that you typically start with a regular growth model where you have a single latent class so just the overall population is analyzed together and you look at uh, what you get so to say how well that fits and you examine uh, the functional form of the trajectories typically so for example are they linear is there linear change across time or non-linear change and then subsequently you would analyze a second a model with two classes where you extract 
two populations, two subpopulations, and you can look at what the trajectories would look like in each class and whether that provides a better summary of the data than a model with that has just an overall growth process in the overall sample. And you can compare a two-class model to the regular uh, single-class model in terms of model fit. So you can look at model fit indices that uh, hopefully would tell you which model fits better, whether it's better to assume two populations or whether a single homogeneous population is sufficient. And then you would continue like this uh, potentially and extract another model with three classes, maybe with four classes, and compare the fit of these models and then see which model fits best in case this is a more exploratory study. So then you would base the um, decision on fit indices and also on the interpretability of the solution. So if you find meaningful classes, then um, then that would be a good thing. But sometimes when we extract more classes, then additional classes don't make sense or seem like they might be artifacts of the analysis. So it's always a combination of model fit and the question of whether the classes are interpretable. You can also approach this in a more confirmatory way. When you have a theory about what classes you should find, then you could specifically estimate only those classes and also put constraints potentially on the parameter estimates such that the classes already correspond to what your theory predicts. Now, oftentimes our theories are not strong enough to really place um, very um, detailed constraints on the parameter estimates, but at least to a certain degree, we could include a confirmatory approach also in a latent growth mixture analysis. So that's how um, that works and how what this is good for. So whenever you think that there are specific subpopulations that have distinct growth patterns, distinct patterns of change that you would like to identify and separate, then you may consider using latent growth mixture models. Latent growth mixture models can also be extended to include covariates because then in the next step we often want to find out what predicts growth class membership. So why are some people in the class, for example, with stable high depression, what predicts that? What kind of background variables may be predictive of that uh, membership versus a class maybe where depression scores are lower or where they decline over time. And so you can include predictors of class membership, for example, by using logistic regression directly in the model. You can predict the probability of belonging to class one versus class two, for example, using binary logistic regression analysis directly in the model and then look at what predicts those growth classes. Now, one software that is really convenient for analyzing latent growth mixture models is the M plus software, which um, neatly integrates models for continuous latent variables such as latent growth curve models with models with categorical latent variables such as growth mixture models or other latent class models. Both these um, types of statistical analyses can be integrated very easily in M plus so that you can have a growth model with latent classes. And it's very convenient to estimate these types of models in the M plus software. I have uh, separate videos on that topic here on this channel that you can find um, in the description where I discuss the M plus syntax for growth mixture models and also the output. You also can find a playlist on my channel where I discuss various types of mixture distribution models in the M plus software, including classical latent class models, uh, latent profile models and factor mixture models. So check that out as well. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to hit the like button in case you like this video and also look at the description for additional resources and I'll see you next week.